Welcome back to Naval Action. I'm going to do a video on my new favourite ship. I think every ship I review becomes my new favourite ship. And it's the USS Constitution. I'm pretty nervous about covering the USS Constitution because to some extent it is a legend of the US Navy. It's probably their equivalent of the Victory and it's got a fantastic history and a fantastic future. So uh, it's still afloat today. Um, it's a museum ship now. It sails around America quite regularly. It can still sail under its own steam. Well, not steam, because it's a sail, you idiot. But still sails under its own sail and actually has some ceremonial broadside cannons still mounted too. She's currently in dry dock getting a complete uh, refurbish and a bit of spit and polish and then I believe she's going to go out and do some more ceremonial work. She's used by the US Navy now as kind of a promotional ship. Let me just see if I can grab you a picture of the real thing and you'll see what a good job they've done in game of um, of rendering her. So there you go. That's the that's the actual Connie. Um, uh, obviously in this particular image she's managed to get herself involved in an AI fleet battle with about 300 cutters and several barges. So that should be a challenge for her. Um, now interestingly enough I have actually been involved in the refit of the Connie myself. And more interestingly enough, I did it 200 years in the future. Uh, what the are you talking about, Jaheel? Well, it's not the first time I've been on a Connie in the gaming world uh, in the last couple of months. Because there I am in Fallout 4. And that is the Connie. Um, with her, what are they, DRX-72 thrust engines fitted and I helped uh, fix her up. She was trapped on top of, I think it was the Western Loan Savings Bank or something and her robot overlords needed some help so being the tinker that I was I gave her, uh, gave her a bit of help, fired a few broadsides off at some uh, scavenger scum and now off she goes sailing into the distance and what could possibly go wrong with that? So that's an interesting little point of order with the Connie. She's, uh, she's in two games at the moment, probably more, but two games that I've played. Um, ordered in 1794 to help with the uh, biffo that the Americans were having with the Barbary Pirates. One of six frigates ordered at that time. Uh, completed in 1797 and her maiden voyage was a year after that. Uh, interestingly enough she's uh, a combination of teak and royal oak, something I can't remember the number, 12, 24 hectares of uh, royal oak. Kind of depends on how far apart you spread the trees I suppose. She used to have, I notice they don't, haven't done it in this model, she used to have as her figurehead the American the American First President's Andrew Jackson, who apparently uh, wasn't popular uh, in Boston in the 1830s, and some scurrilous devil chopped his head off. No need for that. But anyway, um, but she had a fantastic history and probably gave the American leadership the understanding that the arm of power, if it is to be stretched, must be done so through one's navy. It was in the 1812 wars, and in particular against the British, that she excelled. Um, she captured five or maybe six British merchant ships, but more importantly, she sank five British frigates. Um, those frigates were really what she was designed to take out. The Connie is very much built to be the boss of frigates, uh, but still fast enough to get away from the third rates. She's um, uh, about the same length as a third rate, a little bit shorter, but she's a big ship. And you notice that, actually, when you first start sailing her, you really do notice that she's um, more sluggish than the other frigate. Still moves very nicely through the water, but um, when you turn her 
it, 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 she turns like a ship, basically. Um, she's got a lovely colouring, I think. I love the little red because it tells me when my bottom's sticking out of the water and to be wary of leakies, which is, you know, all important these days. She uh, sank five British warships and, and one fame really sinking the, forgive my pronunciation, the Guerriere, um, which was a British frigate she stumbled upon and gave it a great shellacking, in fact such a shellacking that there was not enough Guerriere left to take back as a prize ship, completely demasted and uh, bow raked a number of times. Uh, she then actually took on two British ships and managed to capture one, which she captured both really, but again one of them was in such a, a pickle after the biff that wasn't worth taking back for a prize. And she was in active duty for another 30 years um, before she started doing some more, not quite ceremonial, but um, she was part of the Pacific Fleet and the Mediterranean Fleet and, and ferried a lot of uh, fancy pants sort of politician type people around. Um, uh, because of the fame she won, she was always a favoured ship, so when, although she was put to rest, um, she was never uh, torn asunder, and she was actually officially made a museum ship at the turn of the 20th century in the 1900s, she was made into a museum ship, and 20 years later was completely restored. And as a result, she's still in fine fettle today, and she's still on active service. In fact, one of the chaps in the guild, the clan I'm with, who's been, been on board a couple of times, uh, references her as the oldest serving ship in the American Navy with a kill. So there you go. That's pretty good. Uh, like I say, she's stationed out of uh, Boston. If you get the opportunity... Uh, that's rubbish. If you get the opportunity to go and see her, like I said, she's being repaired at the moment, but in another year or so she should be um, back on back on duty. Uh, she does a lot of touring, typically on anniversaries of various things, uh, the pesky American independence or her own birthdays. She's about 220 now. Fantastic. Um, she, she was fully restored in 1925 and um, has, has basically become a sort of ambassador of the American Navy, which is fantastic, and I think it's a great story. Um, her prowess in battle really won her a great deal of fame. There's stories of her coming home from a, a tour where she'd actually taken on and shellacked a couple of British ships, and as she pulled into harbour, it was noted that she had... Um, a dozen 32-pound cannonballs wedged into a hull. They hadn't penetrated, it was like a, a golf ball effect. Um, so yeah, what a, what a fantastic ship. Now, how does she play in the game? Well, I think one of my favourite things about naval action is the, the difference in ships and how they sail. Um, obviously the yachty type ships are very different to the square riggers. The Trincomalee is, you know, I don't think it could be more different if it tried to sail than some of the other frigates. Um, and this ship feels exactly like what it says on the box. It feels like a fourth rate that's a bully of the other frigates um, and fast enough to evade the third rates and if you're working in a fleet um, she can she can put pain on on the third rates as well so she's a beautiful boat to sail very steady gunboat you'll see now there's really no lean to worry about I mean I'm uh, to the wind a little bit but all you have to do is depower your, your sails and this thing just steadies out and it's just a fantastic firing platform turns reasonably well into the wind for such a big ship. Here you go, I'll just depower now and start running down to battle sails. Um, and you'll see that my heel, my lean, because I'm windward at the moment, drops pretty quickly, but not quickly enough because I've got my sails in get out of the wind mode. Anyway, don't worry about that. Um, as far as armaments go and defences go, 
Um, she's got a whopping 6900 HP and unadulterated without any extra planking or that's just with the basic build. Um, which only puts her marginally down on the third rates. So she's, you know, uh, not even 10% less armour than the third rates. Which is a heap of armour. And I guess, you know, well, her nickname was Old Ironside. Um, and so I guess the extra armour that she carries is to replicate that um, sturdiness that, that basically made her famous. I personally find her a great ship to be doing things like fleet AI in. Um, she's a ship that will get into deep water port battles easy enough. Fantastic screener because she can harry the third rates. Um, she runs at 300 PR which is great value. She has a broadside that just keeps on giving. It really does. Um, you're firing off 27 guns off the broadside. Um, there's, or 26 guns, I should say, off the broadside. Um, you can do 24 pound uh, cannons off the gun deck. It can't, interestingly enough, it can't take carronades, which is reasonably unusual for naval action. Uh, it doesn't let you fit carronades on the gun deck. Sailing turned off. A bit of a meal of this. She runs another 12 guns. Oh, it's 27. She runs another 12 guns on the weather on the the weather deck. Uh, you can fit either uh, 12 pound longs or 42 pound carronades. That's a lot of thump. 42 pound carronades. So if you compare it, for example, to the England England man, she's got 20, 30 percent more armour, significantly less firepower. The Inga 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 lands a bit of a glass cannon, um, but she is built for the biff and reasonably quick. Uh, only half a knot slower than a trink, um, and she has bow and stern chasers, so you can. Um, you can fit 12 pound longs um, on the bow and stern chasers, a pair in each case. Where are these shots going? Into the wall. You can you can fit two on each, so that means she's a good chasing ship. And like I say, if you're um, screening, for example, and harrying third rates who are trying to come in and nick one of your harbors, she's a great great ship for that duty. Um, easily fast enough to keep up with the third rates. Uh, enough cannons to mess up sails if that's the order of the day and enough cannons to damage hull if that's the order of the day. So very versatile. Her broadside, if you can time them all in and uh, they're nicely positioned the guns. Her broadside, like I say, it just keeps on giving. It's beautiful. I personally, I, I, I undercrewed this a little bit um, when I first started, when I first got it. Um, undercrewing is fine-ish. It does have a lot of guns to reload. Maybe think about mediums, which are quicker uh, to reload if you're going to do that. Um, I'm not using carronades at the moment because there's too much PvP going on around and it's... it's rather brave minister to head out there in PvP at the in, in general waters at the moment with the amount of PvP going on wearing carronades because as soon as your opponent realises they just pull off to sort of this distance 500 metres maybe and they can shoot you and you can't shoot them which is you know kind of the best place to be in a shooting fight at a range of your enemy I found her, like, she's quite responsive on the turn, she's got the speed. I've managed to get into quite a few port battles with her because fundamentally after the third rates, it's the fourth rates that are called into the port battles. With the longs, she's got the range and the penetration, they're decent calibre longs to do the damage. So hopefully if these ones hit. Eight of them did, but they did a reasonable amount of damage and knocked her rudder out. 
I have had a few problems. She, she does heal. She sort of sails high in the water. So she doesn't heal a great deal. But she heals enough to show her belly. So you do have to be wary of whether or not you're windward or leeward. And which way you're leaning as far as picking up leaks are concerned. Um, but because when you full crew her... Ah, I just turned. Because when you full crew her... You've kind of got spare men, to be honest, on the guns. Um, repairing the leaks isn't too much of a drama. Um, which this fight's certainly looking like turning into. That's because I'm gibbering rather than shooting. You can craft her at level 35. I think she's the first ship that you need the bigger port for, the level 3 port. So there's a million bucks there just to craft one of these beauties. She uh, can be bought. She's the most powerful ship you can buy from NPCs. So an NPC con will cost you about, I don't know, well I do know, 150,000 gold. Um, you can fish around at different ports. Different ports tend to have different builds. Some are live oak, some are teak. Some are fur, so on and so forth. So you can shop around a little bit if you've got the time and inclination. 150,000 to buy the boat. And you're probably going to have to shell out another 50,000 on armament. Because it is four sets of cannons. And you are beginning to move up to the top of the type of cannons that you need to be buying. So they do become a little bit more expensive. Um, and if, like me, I like to run not just with the longs, I tend to like to have my carronades as well. So effectively, I think it cost me about 70 grand to fit her out totally. Um, let's just drop the deep power there. Pretty ship. Moves nicely through the water. You see here I'm up against all frigates, lower class frigates. Um, and manoeuvrability wise, um, she really isn't a problem. Easy enough to get her guns down into the water. Lay the hurt on. So that was one set of guns there. And the other set are just about to come online. That's that ship pretty much finished off. Let's see if we can be cheeky and turn inside. But I would highly recommend, if you're currently in your trink, I'd highly recommend having a go at one of these. I'd highly recommend... Um, fully wait until you can fully crew her. You can undercrew. The AI fleet missions really don't suit under crewing as much as they used to because as you can see in this particular encounter I've fired off multiple uh, broadsides using both sides of my ship um, and that, that doesn't go well if you're under crewing. to be able to switch to guns only at the moment but I can't because <coughs> I'm right in chains but even you'll see there I was in chains going one way I've chosen to change direction here because I've got broadside offerings over here um, but she moves quite nicely through chains certainly um, more of a frigate than a third rate when it comes to maneuverability Slide on him. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Ooh. No, I don't. But I'm loving this ship. And the good thing with this ship, of course, is you know, you're going to be sailing it a while. It's a lot of XP uh, to move up to Commodore. Um, and I think she's. 
a bit of an all-rounder, so whereas before I was running around in one ship to do my missions, the Trink, um, and open world, um, and open world PvP, and another ship to sort of do port battles with, with this baby, you can use it for everything. Uh, maybe not trading, I think she's only got a hull of 300 or something horrible. She really is right up there. She's the king of frigates. Oh, I'm having a bad day today with the old shooty shooty. Maybe this guy's a ghost ship. There we go. Say goodbye. Only while we're with the wind. Let's see if we can get a line on Foxy Crow. I have to say, this smoke after you fired your tracer, it's not the greatest. Not the greatest way to get ac accurate shooting. So he's turning it out of the wind now. So a smidgen lower. Oh well. That's his sails wrecked, nothing else, and predominantly nothing else. I would, um, if you're looking at doing PvP, if you can buddy up with a trink or two in one of these, or two of these in a trink, so you use the trink to chase with its extra speed. And then these guys bring the meat and gristle to the fight. Um, yeah, quite a combination. There's a video going around at the moment showing a, it's a couple of Connies and a couple of Trinks. And they're taking on two first rates and a third, or perhaps a second rate. And they come out on with the upper hand from that. And it's predominantly because these things are manoeuvrable, they can survive a broadside or two. Um, I certainly wouldn't wouldn't want to survive more than a broadside or two from the big boys, but they can certainly survive a broadside or two. And they um, they do the damage. They're great at bringing sails down from behind. They're nimble enough to stern camp a first, second, or third rate. And they've got the cannon coverage with both. Stern and bow chases. I think that's pretty much it for my review of the Connie. I love her. Like I say, she's currently my favourite ship, but I've just got my hands on an Ingemingemanland, and I've just got my hands on a Bologna. <coughs> so, how long will she stay my favourite ship for? That's a good question. We'll have to see, but at the moment, I am absolutely loving sailing around in this thing. Um, when it's played properly, which I certainly haven't in this farce of a, uh, a game, um, she really can do the biff. As far as upgrades are concerned, I would probably look at an extra pump. As you begin to get into the higher rated ships, an extra pump, and especially with the mods that have happened more recently with the game, um, an extra pump's a, a real boon, so I'd, I'd be looking at an extra pump. I'd also probably look at reinforced masts. Reinforced masts, um, as you begin to start playing with the big boys. That is one of the problems with this ship. You, it's a bit like going to high school for the first time. Although you're the sort of bully of junior school, um, you are the smallest kid in the crowd when it comes to port battles and you're up against all sorts of nasties and first, second and third rates. Um, a lot of those boys like to shoot your sails out so they can then have great hilarity boarding you. Um, so as such, reinforced sails and an extra pump are good. I personally haven't gone for copper plating on this one as an upgrade. Um, speed is fast enough to play with all the frigates. She's only half a knot behind a regular trink. 
So, um, I like to stress an advantage. So you take something like maybe planking, which gives a percentage increase, and because she's got such a lot of armor, you're, you're building on a strength rather than perhaps with a, a copper bottom, you're trying to strengthen a perceived weakness. I don't actually think she is that slow. I think she's uh, half a knot slower than her. Trini is fine. I don't know where these shots are going. I think this guy's got so many holes in him. There we go. That's it. a real bit of problems. Look at that, 23 shots in from a broadside, and half of them are 24 pounders. That has got to hurt. So yeah, reinforced masts, um, maybe a reinforced rudder. I tend not to use that one personally. Um, you can kind of sail with your sails. Um, you, you you can't rudder without your sails, so I think of it that way around. It depends on how many upgrade slots you've got available. Um, magazine access, powder monkeys are good. Um, I am going to give her a go, because I will come back to the ship because she's so lovely. I am going to give her a go with mediums. Um, because I saw the AI, I've been playing against AI constants a little bit recently, and I think they run around with mediums predominantly. And uh, their reload time, which perhaps is hacks. After all, they are cheating bastard AI, so they might be hacks. Their um, reload time is spectacular. Let's have a little look at this. So, that's really the end of the review on the Connie. Um, I'm going to finish this one off on my own and keep this video short enough. Can't recommend it enough. Uh, my favourite ship so far, although I've said that with every new ship I've got. Um, I just think she's good at everything. She moves fast enough. This is her worst sailing aspect, more or less, across the wind like this. So I'll be spinning her around in a moment. She looks good. Great gunbow, a crap load of DPS, loads of survivability. Her bomb's a bit weak, but all the ship's bombs are a bit weak. Crafted at 35, 6,900 side armour. Um, I mean, that's like that's like sellotaping two bell pools to the side of you and having to get through both of them. Absolute. Easy peasy sailing ship. Turns in and out of the wind reasonably well. This is too far out to hill. Let's go in and fight. Fast enough to play with the frigates. Fast enough to get away from the third rates. Uh, without doubt, great value. So it's a hundred and like I say, a hundred and fifty k for the. Um, NPC Grey Grey Edition, we'll call that the NPC Grey Edition, and add in 60k for your cannons. And that's it for the Connie. So I hope you enjoyed that. I love it. I think it's a beautiful ship. Um, go and get one. Uh, you could risk undercrewing one. I wouldn't be a big fan of doing that personally at the moment. If you're AI fleeting, I think AI fleets are quite hard. Um, I've tried to demonstrate that here by not concentrating on it and gibbering instead. Um, listen to the sound of those carronades out the back, my lordy. Go and get one. Love it. It will love you back. That's it for me and my beautiful Connie. Ooh, someone's on fire there. Let's have a look at the fire. Oh no, it's, uh, it's one of my friends. That's it for me and my Connie. I hope you have as much fun sailing as I have. She's beautiful. And I uh, hit like if you like this. Hit like even if you didn't. No, that's not right. Hit subscribe even if you didn't because the next one might be better. I will see you on the ocean and I will catch you.